Psalm 114. Short psalm, but an important psalm. When Israel, okay, we've got our subject, Israel, went out of Egypt, Exodus, history, got to know your history, you can't change history, you'll be in big trouble. The house of Jacob, that's Israel, from a people of a strange language. Well, that's interesting. The Bible records what we don't read in Exodus that there's there's the Egyptian language and there was a language of the children of Israel, Hebrew. And that the Egyptian language was strange. Also believed that the, the ruler at the time was a Hyklus, possibly a Syrian. So there was a, a, a language gap there. It's something interesting. Judah, that's Israel. That's where our Lord comes from, Judah. Was his sanctuary a place to be? And Israel, Jerusalem, I mean Israel, uh, the nation of Israel, Jews, Hebrews, his dominion, that's authority. That sanctuary would be later on, would be Jerusalem. No, actually Jerusalem was in Benjamin, but it's accounted to Jerusalem of Judah of David. When you look at Joshua. So in Psalms 114, let's lay it down. And very rarely do I run to commentaries, but when I, sometimes when I do it, I did not run to any commentary now. But, you know, the church age and for the saint. Yeah, you can spiritualize places and songs for the church age, but when it says Israel, Jacob, Judah, Egypt, Exodus, you're dealing with Jewish people. And we're dealing with Jewish history. So we're going to teach Psalm 114 for the Jew. The seesaw. Did you know in the Bible that there's a seesaw? There it is. Who would ever pick it? And fled. Now for somebody to say, I just read my song. You would have no idea what the Bible says right now. Yet the Bible says to study to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's why you need six six books. The sea saw it. What sea? I don't know. I just I just read my psalm for today. Got one. Doing look, gosh. Doing. There we go. We got one read. You got to study. Let's say I just read my psalm. I pick up my Bible, open up, and the sea saw it. What's the? What does history conclude of itself? What if you erase the Jewish history? What if you add, subtract, and footnote the Bible? What would the sea saw? Yeah, Exodus 14 21, Psalm 77 16. It's the Red Sea and fled. Jordan was driven back. Didn't read his, didn't broke. You don't like the Old Testament? You don't read the Old Testament? You just saw Exodus and you just saw Joshua. Uh, First Kings, I think it is. Elijah, Elijah, the Jordan River is parted. The very place that you would read where John the Baptist is baptizing. Jesus Christ is baptized in the very spot of the Jordan River where Joshua took out 12 stones and put 12 stones back. And that had no memorial for death. 
who stones were the twelve alive children of Israel. God is not the God of the dead. He's the God of the living. I am the God of Abraham. I am the God of Isaac. I am the God of Jacob. They're still alive. So, it's important to read that the parting of the Red Sea and the Jordan River, that's Jewish history. Joshua 3.13 and 3.16. The mountains skip like a ram, and the little hills like lamb. All right, let's play Catholic for a moment. Shall we? You see, John chapter 6, it says, you know, the, the, the bread is the body of Jesus, and the wine is the literal blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, unless you eat my body and drink my blood, John chapter 6, that's literal. Okay. Why don't you take Psalms 114 verse 4, literal. Go out and find me the mountains skipping like rams and the little hills skipping like... Go find me them. Find me mountains and hills that are skipping like animals. Go ahead. I'll, I'll give you a few moments. You can do a video for YouTube, a video for Facebook. You can take your little camera and get it. I want to see the video. Mountains and hills. Oh, so you mean not all things in the Bible are literal? God said once, go to Bethel and transgress. A writer in the Bible said, and the wicked prosper. Come on. You don't know what the Bible said? That's to be taken figurative. You know what that shows? When Israel came into the promised land under Joshua, when they left uh, 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 Egypt under the book of Acts, you know what? The land was happy. The land rejoiced. And there are many times in the Old Testament that you don't read that Israel had victory and they shouted out. And the Bible says the land just shook. The land trembled. The land had a hallelujah. The land was happy. When Joshua crossed the Red Sea and Israel went over, the land was happy. The land that was for the nation of Israel, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, their home. Here they are. That's not to be taken literal. What aileth thee, O thou see? That thou fleddest the Red Sea. Well, what made you go all the way back? What made you do that? Thou Jordan, that thou was driven back. What made you do that? Explain it to me. God. God did it. I can imagine what modern churches, any religion, pick one. And if you don't call yourself a church, whatever you call yourself, I can just imagine what kind of things they explain today in science. Listen, they got documented evidence at the Red Sea, at the bottom of the Red Sea. They have found Egyptian cartwheels of the chariots. So some idiot in the think tank now stupidly trying to explain how the Red Sea went back without God. Some idiots doing it. They won't believe the Bible. How, why? How? What? Where? First part. God. It was a miracle of God. It was a sign to the Jews, for the Jews require a sign. That showed Moses. Hey, Moses, what? I'm taking care of you. Yeah, how? Whoa. This is dry land. Well, what about our enemy? Whoosh, you're gone. The nation of Israel sang the song of Moses. Joshua, I'm with you. Okay. Watch this. You know what? You know why Elijah parted the Jordan River? Because he said, he said to Elijah, Elijah said, All right, Elijah, ask a request of me. He says, I want double your spirit, Elijah. 
Elijah says, wow, okay. But, you know, you got to see me when I'm gone. And Elijah saw Elijah go up in, in, with, the chariot, with the horse and the chariots of fire. Now, Elijah just parted the Red Sea. They walked across. All right, Elijah, how do you have the double spirit of Elijah? Jordan River, exactly what Elijah did. It's a sign. Jews require a sign. Old mountains that skip, skip like ran. Ye little hills like the land. Hey, that's got to be important. You see that? That's twice. Verse 4 and verse 6. I'm going to say it again. I say it every time when I get a very, very in the Bible. How many times is the birth of Jesus mentioned? One. The book of Luke. Matthew? No, he wasn't born. He was... Uh, Matthew said, I'll let you get to Matthew. He was about two years old. And you're not born at two years old. Mark doesn't even mention it all. John, nothing at all. Luke, the medical doctor, Jesus was born. The excitement of the land of Israel coming into the promised land. Psalms 114, verse 4, the mountains skip like rams, the little hills like lambs. Verse 6, the mountains skip like rams, the little hills like lambs. That's important. That's more important than the birthday of Jesus. I'm telling you, if God repeats it, do you know how important it is, the tabernacle, that how often that... Listen, the tabernacle was, all right, Moses said, this is what we're supposed to do. Get all the material. Moses said, these two men are called out to build the tabernacle. This is how they're to build it. And then they said, okay, we finished the tabernacle. This is how we finished the tabernacle. And then, okay, Moses sets forth and anoints the tabernacle, and we're mentioning the tabernacle again. That's more times than... Little things in the Bible. You know how often the creation is mentioned in the Bible, and yet men disregard the creation? Now, we've looked at Israel, Exodus, and Joshua. I don't read that. Sorry. Verse 7. Tremble, thou earth. Ooh. Earth is going to tremble. At the presence of the Lord. Oh, we're going to second advent now. You know what's going to happen when the Lord comes? The earth is going to tremble. And the, the Lord God is going to pick up Israel, what we believe is settled feature, but there's a place prepared for Israel, prepared by God. He's going to pick them up, and he's going to follow the same route that Moses and Joshua followed. And Moses didn't get to go in, but the same place where Joshua led the children of Israel through the land, Jesus Christ is going to lead them through the land. And guess what's probably going to happen at the Jordan River? When we, when Jesus, when we, the body of Christ, the, the, the bride of Jesus Christ, and the nation of Israel, guess what's probably going to happen when we cross the Jordan River? It's going to part. Why? Because it happened in Joshua. And we see in Psalm 114, something about the Red Sea too. Tremble thou earth at the presence of the Lord. Capital L, small O, small R, small D. At the presence of the God of Jacob. Well, who does Revelation 19 says coming? Can you please get a chalkboard and the ABCs to the Jehovah Witness and show that that's Jesus in Psalms 1, I mean, Revelation 19? And then take them over here, Psalms 114, say, at the presence of who? The God of Jacob. Do you know who the God of Jacob is? He's called Jehovah. You proclaim to be Jehovah Witnesses and you don't even know who Jehovah is. The Messiah. So the Messiah's second coming 
is going to have something to do with the Red Sea. I don't know what. But I know what the Jordan River has, where Joshua crossed, where Jesus was baptized, where Elijah and Elijah crossed. They crossed at Jericho, the last city they were at were Jericho. Check it out. Where Jesus was baptized, he's going to take the nation of Israel. Psalms 114 and Joshua, verse chapter 13, 13 is going to happen again under Jesus. That's why the book of Acts and the book of Hebrews, instead of saying Joshua, it says Jesus. And yet your modern Bible changes. You know what Joshua means? It means Jehovah saves. You know what Jesus means? It means Jehovah saves. That's the second Advent passage, verse 7. And the earth is going to tremble. And what's going to happen with the earth? The Bible says in places that the trees are going to clap their hands. I believe that literally. It may not be. The whole earth is going to get all excited. It's going to tremble. He's here. He's here. The curse is removed. The animals are going to celebrate. Paul says something about the earth. It's, it's cursed and it's crying out because we want to be redeemed. We don't want to be cursed any longer. And that's going to happen when Jesus comes back. You're going to find a thorn. I mean, excuse me, you're going to find a rose without thorns. You won't find a thorny crown upon the brow of Jesus because the thorns are gone. You won't find weeds in your garden. You'll be finding a lamb and a lion eating together the straw with an ox. The earth is going to be a celebration. Now, just in case you didn't know it was Jesus, ready? Ready for another event in the wilderness? Which turned a rock into standing water. Paul said that was Christ. Paul said that that rock was Christ. That is Jesus Christ. God of Jacob, and he talks about the rock of Jesus Christ. Tell the Jehovah Witness, just go take a jump in the lake of fire. Because they don't know what you're talking about. Study the scriptures, there it is. The God of Jacob, semicolon, that's not a period, that's semicolon. Which turned the rock into standing water. God turned that rock into water, and Paul says that that rock was Christ. You want to know how much of a miracle that was? It's a miracle. A rock bled water. And Jesus Christ turned water into one. The rock turned the water into one. How much of a miracle was it? The flint. You know when you strike your lighters... And you look at that little wheel, it's got like a file on it. And you look in there, it got a little round cylinder thing, it's on a spring. When you turn that wheel and it, it, it hits that little cylinder, that cylinder is flint. Or it used to be flint. Flint is a rock. Flint stones, remember that cartoon? It's a rock. It is the driest rock you can ever get. And if you strike it together, it makes sparks. Our God's a consuming fire. And yet God took the driest rock and he made water. That's a miracle. That's a sign for the Jews. You know, you take water. Hydrogen. That's highly flammable. You take oxygen. That's highly flammable. And God put it together. And you can put out fire. Come on, Mr. Evolutionist. Explain that one. And God took the driest rock and he, the flint, into a fountain of water. And how do you know that's Jesus? Paul said that was Christ. Oh, you didn't get that? Jesus said to the woman at the well, I am the living water. Who is that? Verse 7. Tremble thou earth at the presence of the Lord, 
at the presence of the God of Jacob, semicolon, we're not finished, which turned a rock into standing water and a plant into fountains of water. That was God's doing, and that's Jesus Christ. For who? The nation fully of Israel. You know what? Eight verses. You know what eight is in the Bible? A brand new beginning. You know what God's going to do when he picks up those Jewish people and the place prepared for them and bring them back into their land through Jesus Christ? He's going to have a brand new beginning. He's going to give them a new heart. He's going to give them a new spirit. And no one's going to mess with Israel ever again. Don't worry about America. I mean, worry about the American souls. But Paul said, pray for the peace in Jerusalem. You know what the peace of Jerusalem is? It's the righteousness of Jesus Christ coming back in horse. Taking care of the goat nation. Blessing the sheep nation and the sheep of the Jesus Christ being brought into the promised land. Glory to God.